So today we're going to deal with the nightmare that is this fuse box. <laughs> few things that I wanted to show you guys so we've got to move the 50 amp circuit in the garage needs to be 60 amp these circuits uh, let's see the range is no longer there which is right there the dryer still works the water heater at 14 and 15 those are no longer needed either they used to have 220 for the for the um, water heater and they used to have 220 for the range so those two circuits we no longer need so that frees us up about 70 amps a circuit now what they do have and i'll show you a little bit more here in a little bit is this sub panel for the ac unit outside notice i've got the, the breakers taken out of it and you'll see why as we get going on this uh this project so hang tight and let's get working on it So we've got our 60 amp breaker. That's gonna replace the 50 amp right here. That's for the garage. And then we're gonna rewire the AC unit to this breaker right here. Right now you're gonna see they've got it actually wired into the two hots coming from outside. I mean, directly right into the, right into the hots, which is completely insane. Um, you'll see here in a minute and it's just, I don't know how they got away with it. They must have never got it approved or done anything or no one's ever looked at this box. But yeah, the minute we took this cover off, as you'll see, it's going to be a heck, heck of a surprise. So I've got all, we only took, and right now the box is live. So we have to be very careful what we're doing here. I want to show you while we've got power here and you can see. But I've pulled the quick disconnect from the AC unit because that's just, yeah, after I saw it, I'm, I was in shock. I couldn't believe that he did that. Or I should say someone had done that. But it's definitely a, a very, very large hazard. Pull this straight off. And down on the floor she goes. Now, if you look at this box's wiring, it comes in on this orange uh, Romex right here and goes right down into the two mains right there. And it's tagged into the mains. Evidently, they thought this would be a good idea. This is actually supposed to be out by the AC unit. And that way, if you have to work on the AC unit, you quick disconnect this, this, uh, this box and you work on your AC unit. When you're fixed, you put it back in and it allows you to turn the power on and off while you're outside working on your AC. Clearly, this was the dumbest idea I've ever seen in my life. Um, I've already got the wires to the to the range. They've been removed. So those weren't, won't uh, affect anything. And yeah, it's kind of interesting what they did here, but uh, we're gonna fix all this today. So the first thing I have to do is I've got to remove those two off the main feed. That's just insane. Um, why they did that, I'll never know. And then we'll swap out this breaker and pull some, pull some lines out of there that we don't need anymore. I'll cut, cut those two wires there. As you can see, we've got the range unhooked. This is where I'm going to put the uh, the feeds for the for the two. As it's towards the top, I may be able to reach this Romex down and actually tag it to these two, but I'll know more when I get it all loose and, and see what I've got. If not, I've got another wire uh, sitting right here ready to go uh, to replace that if need be. But for now, we want to get this off of our main line and get our breaker swapped out. So we're going to have to go through and shut everything off now. Um, we do have to shut down not only the house, we have to shut down the solar and we have to shut down the battery backup because I've got all of them here. 
So we want to make sure there is no power coming in this thing while we cut those two wires. So let's get to that. So as you can see, our solar is in the same room. We've got uh, 23 kilowatts of backup juice, um, all wired through this main panel here. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to cut off the battery backups, all three of them. So th these three all disconnect the battery from the system. So we'll cut those breakers first, and that way we know that there's nothing going on here. And when we come back in, after we shut down the solar, we should see the power off there too. So off we go to cut off the solar. So out here we've got our main panel right there. It's our net meter for our solar. And then our solar runs up that line there. These are all our transfer switches and all that kind of fun stuff for when the power goes out. So the first thing we need to do is cut off the power to the house, which is here. There's our main breaker way up there, our 100 amp. -er. So we'll cut that. Our solar just kicked in. We want to completely shut down the AC. So that's that one right there. That's our ra rapid shutdown. And then we're going to shut down the battery disconnect. So now everything should be off. So we'll go inside and we'll check our, our uh, lines and make sure they're not hot. Okay, coming back into the house. Our batteries are going to still show green because there is power in them right now. We just want to make sure that our disconnects and everything are working. So, okay, first things first, we want to make sure there's absolutely no power to this circuit at all. So the easiest way to do that is check. Let me see if I can get out of your way here. Let's set our meter to AC. And zero. I'm going to clamp it right here on the on this little box. And we want to check our main main line feeds. So we want to go to our neutral bar and one of our main feeds. We are showing zero and zero. And then between the two, we have a zero. So no more power in the box. So first thing we want to do is remove these two lines because those should not be hooked up like that. That's just nuts. And then, like I say, we're going to replace this breaker. So I'm going to move these to here and then swap this out for the new breaker. These two, I've got to figure out where they go. They go up and across somewhere that way. So I'll take a look at that in a minute. But yeah, they're just sitting here, not going anywhere, which I find kind of strange, unless it was hooked to something else. That it, that, uh, that's out there, but let's get those lines cut. Let me grab some tools. Like I said, you want to be very sure that these are disconnected. This in itself is a safety risk because if something ever happened and say this over the AC overloaded and those fuse didn't blow, 100 amps of circuit would be ripping through that thing, starting a fire. Um, but yeah, whoever did this, they should be ashamed of themselves. This is just not the way you do things. So always, 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 I always double check my lines to make sure there is no power. So let me double check these two and make sure. Again, checking the power, we're showing nothing. So now, we need to remove this line. And the really sad part about it was they had these extra circuits that they could have used. You had the one for the hot water heater that was, this was an entirely electric house, and you could have taken that, that circuit breaker. It would have made no difference. But instead they chose to do it like this, which I still to this day don't understand. Whoever did this should be ashamed of themselves. It's clearly, this is a safety hazard beyond safety hazards. So we let that off.
I'm not going to hook this circuit up till later. I just want to get this out of, out of place for now because it is winter and I'm going to get this out of here and get the new, new wiring in so that I can tag it in at any time. And if you look, this just pulled right out of it. Wasn't in there tight at all. Wow. Not that I'm surprised. So we won't be able to replace that right away. Like we want to. But what we can do is finish the box because that's the most important part right now. I made sure I had enough to run all the way to the bottom just in case I needed to put it in a little different, different location. Now we are going to have to come through and wire this circuit, which is fine. I like the heavier duty wire would be better suited for this type of application. That is in and that is good. They don't have a pair of these strippers. I don't envy you. Didn't know what these were until I got them. They make quick work of stripping wires, I'll tell you that much. This is a 220 amp circuit, so um, the white is going to be a hot. So you want to make sure that uh, I probably should take a little bit more off of that one. I think I will. It's not pretty. Keep your wiring clean and neat so that the next guy doesn't have to try to figure out what the hell you were thinking. Sorry, what the heck you were thinking. Really weird. They've got a single ground connection there. They don't have a bar at all like a, they do out in the garage. Still don't get what in the heck these people were thinking when they wired this box. Just unbelievable. Scary beyond scary. Yeah, the more modern boxes have multiple grounds you can connect to. This one seems to only have one giant one and only on one side, which is very strange. 
Okay, so we've got that circuit wired. We've got this one cleaned up. Kind of bites that we can't use that uh, breaker that I got. I've got to order a whole new one. Let me try it one time just to be safe. As you can see, that wire that's going out to the garage will handle 60 amps. We already checked that one. Oh, yeah, see, this one locks in this hook, whereas this one locks in completely definitely locks into the bar. So this one will not work for this application, which is okay. You run into those issues when you're doing this kind of thing, so it is what it is. Okay, so now we're going to leave this circuit off because it is going to nowhere. So for now, we will cap these off and we'll come back and drill a hole for that circuit. But for now, we can close this all up and uh, until we get uh, the rest of it done. Let's cut these. These were for, from what I can see, it looks like they went to the hot water heater. Oh no, that's a, yeah, hot water heater. Okay, we'll push those back down in here. So I don't have a plug that size, so I don't want to plug it off. Alrighty, now let's get that cover back on. And I'm going to pick up some screws for the, the cover, too, because there's only two of them in there. Now, the circuit that we've got dead-ended right now over here, that's the air conditioner. So anytime between the next time I come down here and I replace that breaker, we'll go ahead and wire up that, uh, that box. We're all good here. Like I said, they had this one, they could have used it for the circuit like I did, but they didn't, which is totally bizarre. So we're going to leave this one off. That is the, we're going to have to change the, change this to range so that we know. And then I'm going to have to find a circuit breaker that goes to this type of box um, that works. So that'll be it for right now. Let me go turn on some power, make sure everything's working. Voila, power's back. So the last thing to do is turn on the circuits for the batteries. Two and three. And that's done. So like I say, we're going to have to get a different circuit breaker for this style of uh, cabinet. Uh, we are running the 50 amp out there right now, so we're okay for the time being. But uh, definitely, this line will have to be run through the through here and then into this box. I'm debating upon tagging these wires into each other, putting a box in and connecting them together and putting the disconnect out by the out by the AC unit like it should be. So we'll decide on that. That's all I have for you today. Show you the nightmare that is the wiring in this house. Uh, please do me a favor, like, share, subscribe. Any comments you might have, uh, especially about what type of uh, breaker these are. So I'm so used to the other style, I just go pick up what I know. So if you do know what they are, definitely leave me a comment um, and let me know what you guys think, especially you electricians, what you think of that hookup. And uh, I will talk to you all next week. Hopefully we're back on cars again. <laughs>